Institute of Public Policy, and this is our forum. Today we're going to deal with one of the most controversial issues that are facing the American people, the question of stem cell research. We're going to try to explain what it is and what its consequences are, and where we are as a people, and especially in this state, where we are in terms of examining all of those issues that are so important to all of us. I'm very pleased today to have First of all, some very distinguished guests that can inform our discussion. Because of the nature of the discussion, it'll be a two-part series on the Hall Institute's public policy forum. Our first guest is Paul Aronson, who's a graduate of George Washington University and has been with the Clinton State Department, dealt with the questions of national security and the question of foreign policy. Our second guest is Reverend Tad Pahochik. Many of you know him as Director of Education at the National Catholic Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And our third is Dr. Rick Cohen, who's an Assistant Research Professor at the Keck Center for Collaborative Neuroscience at Rutgers, the State University. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming here today. I appreciate the chance to really explore this issue. I think I'd like to ask you to give us a little bit more background about yourself, your lives, how you got involved in dealing with this issue. Dr. Cohen, would you begin? Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Um, I run the Human Embryonic Stem Cell Training course and the core facility at Rutgers University. And um, I'm originally from Montreal, from Canada, and I'm a landed immigrant. And I studied at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, and also at Albert Einstein College of Medicine in the Bronx. And um, the work that I focus on in the lab uh, uses stem cells, a variety of different types of stem cells, be it human embryonic stem cells, adult stem cells, or neural stem cells to treat spinal cord injury and diseases such as multiple sclerosis. Very good. Father? Uh, I work as the Director of Education at the National Catholic Bioethics Center, and my background is uh, one of both science and uh, religious formation in the sense that uh, I got a doctorate in neuroscience from Yale and did postdoctoral work uh, in a protein chemistry lab at Harvard. And then in Rome, I studied um, dogmatic theology and bioethics. And since that time, I've been doing a lot of speaking on stem cell research, human cloning, and related areas like assisted reproductive technologies, in vitro fertilization, and also a little bit on end-of-life issues. And so I've been really focused on uh, trying to for form people around some of the critical questions that these technologies raise. Very good. Paul? Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, as you alluded to, my background uh, has been primarily in government. Uh, I've worked in, in the federal government doing national security, but I've also worked here in trend uh, state government. I've also worked in the private sector working on health care issues, and I actually even ran for Congress a couple of years ago. But my interest in the stem cell issue, my passion about this issue, is really comes from a personal perspective. Uh, like millions of Americans, I have family members who are struggling with terrible health care situations. I have a sister who has a neurological disorder. I have an uncle who has Parkinson's. And so that's really how I got involved in this issue in the first place. Very good. I want to ask a simple question because I think that it's necessary in such a complex area. What exactly is embryonic stem cell research and how does it work? How, how does it provide any sort of benefits as we look down the road? What is it? Explain to the viewers what exactly it's all about. We start from Rick, one yeah. end. Well, embryonic stem cell research is a little bit of a misnomer because most of the material that's used is from a, uh, a fertilized egg, and it's derived from in vitro fertilization. So the, uh, some of the material that has been used has come from the destruction of these so-called excess fertilized eggs when patients have no longer uh, a use for them, and the inner cell mass 
which um, is then recovered is dissociated and plated on other feeder type of cells, and those form colonies. And basically, the embryonic stem cell is derived from that process. It's a culture artifact because in, in real life, there's never ever a time in, in a real nature that there is embryonic stem cells. Adult stem cells, which come from bone marrow, cord blood, fat, brain, pretty much any other organ, are there normally. They're there in us at, at pretty much any age. Uh, the benefits for looking at embryonic stem cells, or the so-called embryonic stem cells, is really it's teaching us lessons how to understand human development and also how to reprogram other cells. So, for example, there's new research that uses factors that are found in embryonic stem cells to reprogram adult cells. And while it's just at its infancy, it really demonstrates that every cell in our body is equal, just with a different program. So the benefits in the future for embryonic stem cells versus reprogrammed cells, it's not evident yet, but it could be that either embryonic stem cells or the lessons learned from, from embryonic stem cells will produce pluripotent or cells that can become any other type of tissue and help human disease by regenerating organs or, or other tissues. So what would we be doing? We find ourselves in a situation where we'd be able to replicate cells, let's say, in a pancreas that wasn't working anymore as a way of curing the diabetes? Uh, very much so. So uh, either you can take a patient-specific cell, reprogram it, or take an embryonic stem cell and make pancreatic cells. In both of those, uh, in both of those scenarios, you'd have to go through an embryonic stem cell-like state and still have to be able to manipulate those cells to make pancreatic cells. That's just one of the hurdles. You still have to know how to transplant them. So I think for your average person, when they think about stem cells, the key concept is that you have a very flexible cell. It's a cell, you might think of it as a blank cell, that you can push it this way, you can push it that way. And that's its chief merit and its chief appeal and attraction, if you will. Good. We're going to just break for a second, and we'll be back to try to understand the question of stem cell research.